and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Rishika Barwa. Let's get you up to speed with the top headlines we're checking today. Kiran Bedi removed as the Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. The move comes amid a crisis in the Congress. Four MLAs have quit. Two of them have joined the BJP. Rahul Gandhi, meanwhile, will be in Puducherry today. Four cases of the South African variant of coronavirus now in India. One case of the Brazilian mutation too. This amid 187 UK variant cases. The government says it is worrying calls for extra cautions. Amid a COVID-19 surge in the state of Maharashtra, the Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre chairs a virtual meet of divisional commissioners, collectors. Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar also present. Apartment complex in Karnataka, capital Bengaluru, has been declared a containment zone after 103 of its residents tested positive for coronavirus after two parties that took place. Vaccinations in the state of Madhya Pradesh hit a major hurdle. 19% beneficiaries in doubt over wrong phone numbers. The government postpones the second dose to the 20th of February. Tanks, troops, tents, China pulls back at Pangong. Indian tanks also pull back at Pangong. Indian defence cameras monitor the withdrawal. A Delhi court uh, today is likely to pronounce its verdict in MJ Akbar's defamation case that's been filed against Priya Ramani. Our top story this morning, Kiran Bedi was removed as the Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry late on Tuesday night in what sources said was a political move designed to negate the opposition party's primary campaign platform for assembly elections due in May. The Rashtrapati Bhavan said uh, President Ramnath Kovind had directed the Telangana Governor Tamil Sai Sondara Rajan to take over till a replacement is announced. Um, Kiran Bedi's removal also came hours after a fourth member of the ruling Congress resigned from the Assembly, plunging Chief Minister V. Narayan Sami's government into a crisis. Shortly before she was removed, uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Narayan Sami in fact told NDTV that one of the MLAs who had resigned had been harassed several times by the Lieutenant Governor. Right, joining us right now is B. Narayan Swami, Chief Minister of Puducherry. Mr. Narayan Swami, thanks very much for speaking to NDTV. My first question to you, sir, why do you think Ms. Kiran Bedi has been removed as Lieutenant Governor? See, we have been uh, demanding her removal for the last four and a half years. The day she assumed office, she behaved in an autocratic manner. And we did several agitations against her for removal. Yes. We met the Prime Minister, we met the Home Minister, we met the President of India. But the BJP government at the centre was encouraging her to create problem for our government. Right. And our last attempt was to meet the Honourable President of India about a few days back. Yes. We gave a memorandum to him after all the agitation. It was the secular front. Congress, DMK and allied parties have joined together and wanted a removal. And ultimately, we have succeeded. The victory is for the people of Puducherry. Sir, do you think this is a political move to blunt your party's campaign ahead of the assembly elections? Ms. Kiran Bedi, uh, your campaign was centered against Ms. Kiran Bedi. Now that she is gone, hasn't your campaign been blunted? No, no, no. Our, our target is on the central government, which has been totally ignoring the state of Puducherry, usurping the powers of Puducherry government, not giving the due grant to the state government, imposing India on the state, Puducherry state, imposing neat exam on Puducherry people, uh, removing this uh, the subsidy scheme for the various schemes of government of Puducherry. That our target is on the central government. Uh, and, and apart from that, our target is on Karen Bedi also. Yes. Uh, sir, now let's talk about your government. If my numbers are correct, you are right now on the halfway mark with four MLAs having resigned and one being disqualified. Is your government in crisis, sir? 
No, no, our government is not in crisis. In fact, only three resignations have been accepted. Yes. As far as the fourth is concerned, we have been talking to our Honorable Minister Sri Maladi Kishara. And the, 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 we are in a majority. Because the, 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 the creation has been made by BJP. What BJP is doing in Puducherry? What they did in Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, uh, then uh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, they're, they're, what they are doing, they topple the elected government by luring them, by poaching them, yes. by using money power and also their power at the center yes. and threatening them and booking cases against them, yes. using ED, CBI, income tax against the MLAs and MPs. This is the this is the way of democracy. The people of India now they understood yes. that B BJP is not bothered about democratic norms and values. Honorable Prime Minister is telling the cooperative federalism. Where is cooperative federalism? It is a dictatorship in government of India. But as we, we completed with all this the the pressure from the central government, interference by Lieutenant Governor Kiran Bedi, opposition parties targeting our government, we have completed full term. Uh Sir, uh, I was speaking to Mr. T. Pine, then one of your former MLAs who's joined the BJP now. He's saying that more Congress MLAs are ready to jump ship. What would you say to that? Uh, that, that shows that they are the, the BJP is poaching the MLAs. They, they the, because what they are doing, they are giving them false hopes. Puducherry BJP is a non-existent party. What kind of hopes are they gi giving them, sir? According to you, so they are luring them with money, luring them with uh, with all kinds of uh, things, telling them that we will appoint to as a chairman of the board, we are we will appoint to as a nominated MLA. They are giving them lot of hopes because I know I was in government of India as a minister. I know what the promises of BJP. They they have been giving all small promises to them. Sir, do you have any evidence of any money exchanging hands? You are accu uh, accusing the BJP of luring them with money. Is there any evidence of money exchanging hands? No, it, it, it's, a, it's a public talk in Puducherry. Why should I give evidence? The people of Puducherry are talking. This MLA has been purchased. This minister has been threatened, yes. saying that we will file false cases against you. Yes. Sir, ahead of, ahead of the elections, are you confident that you can keep your flock together you have uh, as it is you had a wafer thin majority now the numbers are going down can you no, keep no, your I, flock I, together I see, hardly hardly a code of conduct will come within a, within 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 10 days or 12 days yes what matters for what matters for us we have completed our full term yes but we, our all our mlas are together we are all together today all the mlas have given very solid to me including our ministers, that we will, we will fight back. We will win the election. Yes. That confidence they have given me. Right. Uh, sir, uh, just uh, the last uh, couple of questions. Uh, going into these assembly elections, how confident are you that uh, you will be able to fight back this, uh, uh, the BJP's attempts to make inroads into Puducherry? See, not to, I am not, not only I am confident, our Congress leaders and workers are confident. They are all enthused. They, are, they all know the, the foul play that has been played by BJP. Yes. They understand the, the unethical way of the handling issues by BJP. And moreover, the, we have the solid support of our Honorable Congress President, Madam Sonia Gandhi, our young leader, Rahul Gandhi. Our alliance party leaders, Mr. Stalin and others. Therefore, we, we are we are going in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. You can definitely see Mr. Stalin will become the chief minister of Tamil Nadu in our alliance government. In Puducherry, under the, with the blessings of Madam Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, Congress led will government will come. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Narayan Swami, one final question on Ms. Kiran Bedi's removal. The sources are saying that her removal was one of the conditions put forward by Mr. Namasivayam, one of uh, your uh, MLAs uh, uh, who, had, uh, who had put this condition of her removal. What is your reaction to that? No, I was not present at the meeting. How, how can I react on that? 
uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, do you think your uh, uh, do you think that your campaign uh, will uh, now suffer a setback with Miss Kiran Bedi gone? But but uh, no, there, there is there is no setback for us. It is a victory for the the, the people of Puducherry. It is a victory for our our fight, our secular fight fighting against her. It is a victory for uh, the people are celebrating. They are they are, they are cracking uh, the the uh, the crackers. They are uh, and uh, fireworks uh, they are doing and they are celebrating with sweets. It's a celebration is going on in Puducherry for removal of Dr. Kiran Bedi. All right, Mr. Narayan Swami, thanks very much for speaking to NDTV. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we'll keep a close watch on all those political developments. Remember, Rahul Gandhi will also be visiting the state of Puducherry today. Meanwhile, let's shift our focus to the other big story that we're tracking, the latest in the toolkit probe. The court has permitted uh, warm clothes and daily family meetings to Disha Ravi, who is remember in the Delhi police's custody. The Bombay High Court has meanwhile reserved its order on Wednesday on, the, on Nikita Jacobs' plea, while Shantanu has got transit bail from court. Akshay Dongre and Purva Jitnes with the full story. After young climate activists, the Delhi police is now probing the role of farmers in the toolkit case. Specifically, they are investigating who all edited or shared the open document that climate activist and icon Greta Thunberg tweeted over which 22-year-old Disha Ravi was arrested. The police is focusing on a Zoom call. According to the police, 70 people were part of this a month ago that was allegedly organized by the Canada-based Poetic Justice on the 11th of January. Police say this group is pro Khalistan. They claim most people who took part in the Zoom meeting kept their identities hidden. Police has written to Zoom for more information of the call. A WhatsApp group was formed on 6th December by the name of International Farmers Strike. Disha has revealed many names during the interrogation, the police claim. After the controversial arrest of the young woman in Bengaluru and no lawyer of hers present at her remand hearing, a Delhi court has directed the police to provide a copy of the FIR and other documents to Disha's lawyer. Her lawyers and family can also meet her daily. Meanwhile, Nikita Jacob, a lawyer herself, had approached the Bombay High Court seeking transit anticipatory bail and the High Court reserved the order for tomorrow. Well, the Aurangabad bench of Bombay High Court has provided a 10-day transit anticipatory bail to Shantanu Maluk. The Delhi police has also assured that Nikita Jacob will not be arrested till the time the court orders come out. With Purva Chitnis in Mumbai and camera person Ashwini Mehra, I'm Akshay Dongre for NDTV. Well, on to the other big development we're tracking today. The army has released video clips of the disengagement uh, process that, con that is continuing in eastern Ladakh. So far on the south bank of the Pangong, uh, 130 to 140 Chinese tanks have withdrawn from their positions. Approximately 30 artillery guns have been removed from both the north and the south banks. 2,000 Chinese troops have been withdrawn from both the north and the south banks of the Pangong Lake as well. Vishnu Shom with the full story. The footage here shows tanks from both sides moving away from one another on the south bank of Pangong. Chinese forces removing tents. A large number of Chinese soldiers walking down a hillside to trucks which are waiting to take them away. Chinese earth movers restoring the land in the area. In other words, removing military structures which had been set up and tents also being removed. While the process of disengagement is well and truly on along the Pangong Lake, it's yet to begin in the other areas where Chinese forces have crossed the line of actual control into Indian territory. The government says talks for that will start within 48 hours of this round of disengagement having been completed. Vishnu Shom for NDTV.
Welcome back. On to the other big story we're tracking this morning. Maharashtra continues to remain a cause of concern as far as the COVID-19 cases are concerned. Maharashtra is witnessing a high number of cases once again. In fact, Maharashtra had the highest number of cases among all states in the last 24-hour period. Amid this, a technical glitch has further hampered the second dose of the vaccination process in the state. What we're also learning is that the Chief Minister Udhav Thakre has chaired an all-important meet of divisional commissioners, collectors. Uh, this was an important uh, meeting that was held via video conference to take stock of the COVID-19 crisis in the state. The Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar was also present at this meeting. One of India's top most COVID officials getting his second dose of the vaccine. But in Maharashtra, the rollout is painfully slow. Here in Mumbai, over 1900 like Manisha Srivastava were to get the second jab on Monday. Only 71 actually did. But she says no one contacted her and she is still waiting. I was second dose, but I SMS. But intimation nahi aaya aur SMS nahi aaya, jo ki first dose mein aaya tha. To expected tha ki wo aaye. To is chakkar mein thoda sa rahe gaya. Seema Bansode, a department head at Sion Hospital, blames the portal. Koi beneficiaries wahan pe aaye the, lekin unko, unka naam portal pe nahi dikh raha tha, iske liye unko vaccine nahi diya gaya. To ye jab mene observe kiya, to mene turant public health department ke jo AHO hai, EPI ke, Madam Jagtam, उनसे बात की तो उन्होंने मुझे बताया है कि गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के अथॉरिटीज के साथ उसने उन्होंने चर्चा की है उन्होंने बताया है कि पोर्टल के ऊपर जब तक लोगों का नाम अपलोड नहीं किया जा सकता तब तक हम ये लोगों को वैक्सीन नहीं देंगे और उसके लिए दो या तीन दिन लग सकते हैं Fortunately the window for the second dose is wider than just a couple of days Second dose is administered in a window of 4 weeks to 6 weeks That's our official guideline and therefore, because it is voluntary, our healthcare workers are choosing to decide when to come within that window. And therefore, we are truly not worried. We have faith in our healthcare workers that they will return to take the second dose. To speed up vaccinations, 20 private hospitals in Mumbai can now vaccinate their employees. Maharashtra has been slow to vaccinate, even as it continues to be one of the worst hit states. The second dose of COVID vaccination in Maharashtra is being given at a time when the cases are rising in the state. But now, due to technical glitches, the healthcare workers will have to wait for a while to get the vaccine. Due to which, now questions are being asked to the central government's preparedness of the vaccine. In Mumbai with Ashok Mahadik, Sohit Mishra, NDTV. Now, the Mumbai mayor has uh, clarified on her earlier statement, a fresh lockdown is not possible and people must continue to take all COVID-19 precautions amid the rising number of cases in the city. No, this is not possible. But people should also understand. Our Mumbai people are very good. They are very cooperative. They have given a lot of good things. तो मुझे लगता है जो संख्या बढ़ रही है उससे हम चिंतित हैं। Now the big cause of concern in Maharashtra is that the vaccination drive has hit hurdles uh, amid the spike in cases. A similar story is playing out in Madhya Pradesh as well. A case of negligence in the nationwide vaccination drive has come to light in the state, where wrong phone numbers for almost one in five beneficiaries has been found in the light of this the madhya pradesh government has postponed the second dosage of the vaccination to the 20th of february ndtv's anurag dwari has access to report on the vaccine program negligence it was a moment to celebrate when frontline workers got vaccine shots but almost a month later a case of gross negligence in madhya pradesh this confidential report prepared by the health department and accessed by NDTV shows that the given mobile number of not one or two but a staggering 1,37,454 employees have been found to be replicated, including 83,000 health workers. That is one number for hundreds or thousands of people. 
The worrying result is that almost 1 in 5 in Madhya Pradesh who should have been vaccinated could not be, simply because they could not be informed. Nothing official about the goof up in this report, but of the record we have been told that this is because of the clerical error by the respected departments. So are the phone numbers genuine? We gave few of the numbers a call to check. Lacks of COVID warriors vaccinated with the same mobile number and the worst part, they were not even aware when to get the second dose. In Bhopal with camera person Rizwan Khan and Anurag Dwari for NDTV. Well, this, of course, is uh, the extremely worrying story that we're tracking from Madhya Pradesh. We'll keep a close watch on all those developments. Meanwhile, an apartment complex in Karnataka's capital of Bengaluru has been declared a containment zone after 103 of its residents tested positive for coronavirus. According to the district officials, a surge in COVID cases was recorded just days after two parties were organized in the residential society. Shonakshi Chakravarti reports. All right, we will uh, keep a close watch on all of those uh, developments as well. We're going to slip into a very short break. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. A Delhi court is likely to pronounce today its verdict in uh, the former union minister M.J. Akbar's criminal defamation complaint against journalist Priya Ramani for her allegations of sexual harassment against him. Akbar had filed uh, the complaint against Priya Ramani on October the 15th, 2018 for allegedly defaming him by accusing him of sexual misconduct decades ago. He resigned, remember, as a union minister on the 17th of October 2018 as a fallout of the allegations. He has denied all the allegations of sexual harassment against the woman, uh, against all the women, in fact, who came forward during the Me Too campaign against him. Well, and fuel prices continue to spike for the 10th straight day. But who is really being uh, hit the hardest? The common man. Here's a report from Kerala. Radhakrishnan is spending 100 rupees more every day compared to a month ago to transport coconuts. On a weekly basis, he spends over 1800 rupees on transport. His profit now down to 500 rupees every day, which was already hit by 75% due to the pandemic. Petrol price is at 91.16 per litre and diesel at 85.66 rupees per litre in Tiruvananthapuram, up almost 6 rupees since the start of this year. Near him, Srikantan sells a hot cup of tea and snacks at 8 rupees each, but says despite increasing costs, he can't afford to increase the price. Shrikantan used to buy a non-subsidized cylinder meant for hotels at 1,250 rupees, now at 1,600 rupees. As Kerala gears up for assembly elections, UDF has raised the soaring fuel prices as a campaign point against the BJP-ruled central government and the CPM-led ruling front at the state. We have the demand to the central government to reduce the customs duty, uh, uh, excise duty. We uh, gave public in New York period 617 crores as concession. He is escaping the real issue. The real issue is the price hike done by the central government. For most families, their income is far from what it used to be during pre-COVID times. And these soaring fuel prices may only mean a further decline in their income. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. 
Well, it is indeed a double whammy for the people. Amid the hike in fuel prices in the last 10 days, the price of LPG cylinders have also increased by 75 rupees. On February the 4th, it was increased by 25 rupees and now from February the 15th, it's been increased by another 50 rupees. The price hike is hitting the low-income families the hardest. For Juma Goswami, cooking on the gas meant an escape from harmful smoke of a coal or kerosene stove. But gas prices are up, her car driver husband's salary is stagnant and using gas is turning into a luxury. For Gautam Shardar and his wife, the good old kerosene stove is back in use. It costs less than cooking gas. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has also raised the issue. Every day they are increasing the price, either diesel price or the petrol price or the gas cylinder price. Sometimes they said that they will give the subsidy for the gas cylinder, but that is also not there. All the subsidy has been withdrawn. For lower middle class and poor families that run on shoestring budgets, the LPG price hike has hit them hard, with budgets going completely haywire. In Kolkata with camera person G.D. Shankar, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. Well, the counting of votes and declaration of results in the Punjab municipal election 2021 will take place today. Polls were held for 117 urban local bodies, including eight high-stake municipal corporations, with close to 9,222 candidates in the fray. The civic body elections were the first ground-level electoral battle after the farmer agitation began over the central government's contentious farm laws. The political parties, including the ruling Congress government and the former ally of the BJP, the Akali Dal, had pegged the civic polls as a referendum on the farm laws. Ghazali joins us with the very latest. Uh, Ghazali, it's going to be extremely interesting to see the results of this local body election uh, because, you know, like the political outfits themselves are saying, this really is going to be the first referendum after the farmer agitation began. Yes, certainly. And uh, it is interesting in another aspect because, see, here in Punjab, the BJP, is the one which which was uh, sort of favoring uh, the farm laws and rest of the parties were opposing the farm laws so more than bjp it would be significant to see that which other party other than congress among congress aam aadmi party and uh, akali dal manages to win uh, big seats in the urban areas because generally when akalis were in power for the 10 years they were uh, they had this vote bank in rural areas and they had to bank on bjp for the urban uh, vote share now after they split we'll have to it will be interesting to see whether akalis have managed to gain anything in the urban areas and also since aap is also a contender and they have also been canvassing in the state over the farm laws uh, it will be a competition or a sort of a battle between aam aadmi party and the akalis to gain for the second spot because uh, generally it is perceived and believed that the party which is in power in the state manages to win seats in the local body. So Congress, uh, though the government has been blamed by the opposition for orchestrating violence and all, but they say that they're comfortably placed. So yes, it will be, a, uh, though BJP uh, doesn't look very hopeful of winning too many seats, but certainly there are many independents who are from BJP or those who are not fighting on the symbol. So also uh, the first referendum, you can say, or uh, decision on farm laws also in a year we have a state assembly polls uh, in Punjab. So most of the parties, whether whatever they manage in this election, will try to show that this is the mood of the state ahead of the assembly polls. All right, Ghazali, appreciate you for joining us uh, with the very latest. We'll continue to track those numbers as, uh, you know, like Ghazali is pointing out, it will in a certain sense reflect the mood uh, of the people after the farmer agitation began. With that, we're going to slip into a very short break, but coming up on the other side, we'll get you all the top stories we're tracking from around the world. Stay with us.
Well, after an impressive all-round show on his home ground against England, our Rashwin speaks to Virat Kohli and gives an insight into his mindset, change in his batting approach and a lot more. Ash, how um, is the feeling? I know you've, you've done very well in Test Cricket and you take a lot of pride in doing well for the team, but this collective performance, uh, which you've been actually working very hard for, for uh, a long time now to... to happen in front of your your home fans and your family as well how does it feel i don't know actually for the first time in my career i feel uh, blank and when i went out to bat yesterday as well i was blank when i came and asked you can i start sweeping can i do a sweep yeah, yeah. so that's exactly how i feel uh, zero zero feelings or emotions inside uh, very rarely i find myself in such situation you know me very well my mind is always ticking uh, but for the, for a change it's it's really really blank and out there especially being one nil down uh, the, what i did was something incredible Yes, I had things go my way, but uh, that partnership between us really set the tone. I'm so pleased for this. Well, Australian-born actress Pallavi Sharda, who has uh, done many films like My Name is Khan and Begum Jaan, has bagged her big Hollywood role. She stars in Tom and Jerry, in which she plays an Indian bride. She spoke with Rohil Kilani about bagging her big ticket role and more. <laughs> ंग <laughs> I used to watch a lot of Tom and Jerry in India when we would come as kids. Right. Um because I think it was more prevalent there, you know, when I, in the 90s growing up, my cousins were always watching Tom and Jerry. Dad was probably the most excited when I was cast in this film. Um he he put out lots of social media posts saying meri beti aur Tom and Jerry ek saath aa rahe hain. Uh how did you bag this role if you can share with us? she a talent rohit no um of i course. just no, no, no. <laughs> um i was i was it was two years ago i was in uh, london for, for some beecham house press and and um to go to the khan series for the premiere with gurinda and it was just the right place at the right time to a large degree because they were looking um for their actress there and i managed to do the the the, the good deed and get it i don't know Right and so there's a big Indian wedding that's going to take place in this New York hotel um and you are the bride of course uh what what was that like and if are you anything close to the character that you play this one she loves animals she has a dog she um, lost her ring so anything I would lose my ring I lose every ring and that I was like I would do that please don't get, I'm going to tell if I ever find a, a man that wants to marry me I'm going to be like give me a dhaga put that around my like a replaceable dhaga that's all I want and I, but I would probably be like Preeta not want the big Indian wedding just give me a cotton sari and like a lake and a pandit and I'll be fine I guess the groom would also be helpful but um yeah I I think I I did relate I related to her simplicity and the fact that she didn't want all of the tam tam Hello and welcome back. Our top story, Kiran Bedi was removed as Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry late Tuesday night in what sources said was a political move designed to negate opposition parties' primary campaign platform for assembly elections due in May. Rashtrapati Bhavan said President Ramnath Kovit had directed Telangana Governor Tamilasai Sundararajan to take over till a replacement is announced. Ms. Bedi's removal also came hours after a fourth member of the ruling Congress resigned from the assembly. plunging chief minister v narayana swami's government into a crisis as a parting shot kiran bedi thanked the government for a lifetime experience as the lieutenant governor of puducherry shortly before she was removed mr narayana swami told ndtv that one of the mlas who had resigned had been harassed several times by her narayana swami thanks very much for speaking to ndtv my first question to you sir why do you think ms kiran bedi has been removed as lieutenant governor see we have been uh, demanding her removal for the last four and a half years the day she assumed office she behaved in an autocratic manner 
and we did several agitations against her for removal. Yes. We met the Prime Minister, we met the Home Minister, we met the President of India. But the BJP government at the centre was encouraging her to create problem for our government. Right. And our last attempt was to meet the Honourable President of India about a few days back. Yes. We gave a memorandum to him after all the agitation. It was the secular front. Congress, DMK and allied parties have joined together and wanted a removal. And ultimately we have succeeded. The victory is for the people of Puducherry. Sir, now let's talk about your government. If my numbers are correct, you are right now on the halfway mark with four MLAs having resigned and one being disqualified. Is your government in crisis, sir? No, no, our government is not in crisis. In fact, only three resignations have been accepted. Yes. As far as the fourth is concerned, we have been talking to our Honorable Minister, Sri Maladi Kishara. And the, 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 we are in a majority. Because the, 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 the creation has been made by BJP. What BJP is doing in Puducherry? What they did in Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, uh, then uh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. They're, they're, what they are doing? They topular elected government by luring them, by poaching them, yes. by using money power and also their power at the center yes. and threatening them and booking cases against them, yes. using ED, CBI, income tax against the MLAs and MPs. This is the, this is the way of democracy. The people of India now they understood yes. that B BJP is not bothered about democratic norms and values. Honorable Prime Minister is telling the cooperative federalism. Where is cooperative federalism? It is a dictatorship in government of India. But as we, we completed with all this, the, the pressure from the central government, interference by Lieutenant Governor Karen Bedi, opposition parties targeting our government, we have completed full term. There have been a lot of uh, problems uh, for the alliance, uh, the Congress and the DMK ahead of the uh, assembly elections. Uh, there are others who are very keen and interested uh, so definitely all eyes on his visit today where he's going to meet a uh, host of uh, party workers as well as uh, 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 try to uh, rejuvenate the uh, Congress uh, uh, cadres who are now uh, quite demoralized uh, with these uh, uh, MLAs resigning. Having said that, of course, the fact that uh, Kiran, Badi, uh, Kiran Bedi has been finally uh, removed uh, will be a big sign of relief, not only for the Chief Minister, as you heard, uh, but for many uh, within the uh, political circles, because be it the BJP, be it the ADMK, be it the DMK, be it the PMK, uh, name any political party, I think they were all together in the fact that they didn't want and uh, uh, and uh, the fact that Kiran Bedi had become a political liability. Uh, so ultimately, good reason uh, had to come. Uh, the Home Minister as well as the Prime Minister directing the President, uh, requesting the President uh, to remove uh, Kiran Bedi. Uh, so she didn't complete her tenure. Uh, and they have appointed uh, somebody as a stopgap arrangement. Uh, definitely, uh, whether this government is in a minority or not, uh, can be only tested on the floor of the house. Uh, but either way, it's only another month's time uh, before, uh, and, and, and hopefully in another uh, week or so, uh, the election commission uh, will be announcing uh, the, uh, 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 the dates for the elections uh, in, the force, in, in, in Pondicherry as well as Tamil Nadu, apart from uh, West Bengal and Assam. Uh, so it's in that context we'll have to wait and see uh, whether this government will continue. But either way, it's a big, uh, uh, it's a big uh, uh, crisis uh, for the Congress uh, in terms of how it gets its numbers, how it gets its cadres together, and how they de are able uh, to muster that uh, required uh, uh, strength uh, because this is an incumbent government and uh, whether Rahul Gandhi uh, will be able to work uh, in boosting the morale of the Congress workers and help them win uh, the coming elections. Now, while Prime Minister Narendra Modi made a strong political statement on Sunday, holding hands of Chief Minister EPS and his deputy OPS, his allies in poll-bound Tamil Nadu DMK chief MK Stalin has strongly criticised saying the Prime Minister held what he calls tainted hands, referring to the CBI probe against EPS ordered by the Madras High Court. Though the top court has stayed the probe, Stalin says by joining hands, the Prime Minister aids corruption. This is what MK Stalin told NDTV Sam Daniel. So you were actually critical of the Prime Minister holding hands of both the Chief Minister EPS and his Deputy OPS at a government function in Chennai recently. Uh, what's wrong with that? Modi and Modi, Todar Pracharam, our political leader, Sulit Rikarade, 
ஊழலற்ற ஆட்சியை அமைப்போம் அப்படின்னு தான் தொடர்ந்து சொல்லிகிட்ருக்கிறார் ஆனால் ஊழல் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கக்கூடிய முதலமைச்சர் பழனிசாமி அவர் மேலே ஏற்கனவே சிபிஐயில் வழக்கே பதிவாகிருக்கு உயர்நீதிமன்றத்துக்கு போய் கான்ட்ராக்டில் தன்னுடைய சம்பந்திக்கு சம்பந்தியோட சம்பந்திகளெல்லாம் ரெண்டாயிரம் கோடி மூவாயிரம் கோடி டெண்டரில் டெண்டர் விட்டதில் வந்து ஊழல் நடந்திருக்குன்னு எங்களுடைய வழக்கறிஞர் பாரதி எம்பி அவர் போட்ட வழக்கு வந்து சென்னை உயர் என்பது ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளப்பட்டு சிபிஐ விசாரிக்கணும் உத்தரவிடப்பட்டு அதை போய் பழனிசாமி அவர்கள் போய் ஸ்டே வாங்கி வச்சுருக்கிறாரு அது நிலுவையில் இருக்குது அதே மாதிரி ஓ பன்னீர்செல்வம் மேலே சொத்து குவிப்பு வழக்குகள் பல வெளிநாடுகளில் சொத்து வாங்கி வச்சுருக்கிறது அந்த வழக்குகள் இருக்குது இதை நாங்கள் கவர்னர்கிட்டையும் பட்டிஷனாக கொடுத்துருக்குறோம் விசாரணை பண்ண சொல்லி அப்படிப்பட்ட கரைப்படிந்த கரங்கள் அவங்க அந்த கரங்களை பிடிச்சி மோடி பிரதமராக இருக்க மோடி அவர்கள் ஒரு கையை ஓபிஎஸ் கையையும் ஒரு பெரிய இபிஎஸ் கையையும் பிடிச்சி நின்று நின்று காமிச்சது அதை வந்து ஏற்றுக்கிறாரா ஆதரிக்கிறாரா அப்படின்னு தான் எங்களுக்கு சந்தேகம் வருது ஆக அதுக்கு உடந்தையாக இருக்கிறார பிரதமர் அப்படிங்கிற எண்ணமே எனக்கு வந்திருக்கு பட் மெனி வுட் சே தேவ் நாட் பின் கன்விக்டட் யூ ஸ்டில் பிலீவ் தட் ஈவன் இன் திஸ் ஸ்டேஜ் இட்ஸ் நாட் ரைட் டு போஸ் தட் வை இல்லைன்னா வந்துருச்சா வரலில்ல ட்ராவலே தானே அப்புறம் போய் உயர்நீதிமன்றம் வந்து சிபிஐக்கு விசாரணைக்கு விசாரணை பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னு இதுக்கு சொல்லணும் In West Bengal, the left and the Congress announced an understanding on seat sharing for the upcoming assembly elections, but they are not giving out any numbers because several other parties including the NCP and the RJD are keen to join the fight in the state against the BJP and Congress. The Indian Secular Front, which was founded just last month by the 34-year-old cleric and preacher from Furfara Sharif Peer Abbas Siddiqui, has now sought an alliance with the left and Congress formation. The Trinamool and BJP wanted a bipolar fight, but there will be a triangular fight in Bengal this time, Congress leader Adir Chaudhary said off the talks. We have my colleague Moni Deepa Banerjee joining us live. Moni Deepa, are the odds stacked against the left, and co- uh, left Congress alliance in West Bengal? What can you tell us at this moment? Well, uh, their performance in the last elections uh, separately was very, very, um, you know, disappointing for them. Uh, together, they got about 12% votes and, uh, you know, um, no seats at all uh, in the parliamentary elections. So the, the Congress got a couple, but nothing for the left. So both of them trying to really reinvent themselves, which is why this alliance. And, uh, you know, there is NCP and RJD, which have recently uh, said that they want to join the fight. So, uh, you know, why the Congress and left decided not to announce the seat yesterday was because they have to uh, make room for NCP. and rjd but most interesting of course is how many seats they are willing to share with the indian secular front now this is a brand new party formed in january and is headed by uh, peer abbas dikki who is a 34 year old preacher with huge following even on social media and he has now um, you know sort of taken on the challenge of turning these uh, you know um, uh, religious uh, supporters into political voters for his party and you know how that will succeed and how much he will actually be able to in a way split the minority vote in bengal which is otherwise all with the trinamool congress that is what everyone is keeping an eye on uh, the the party has apparently sought a number of seats from the left congress alliance but that has not been decided yet which is why the actual break up of seats who is fighting how much is held up the trinamool congress of course says this whole third front initiative initiative if you want to call it that is uh, inconsequential bjp says getting in abbas siddiqui means the left and congress is aligning with a party which was last seen talking to asaduddin owaisi of mim thank you for that update moni deepa on to punjab the punjab municipal election uh, 2021 voting concluded on sunday february 14 and the counting of votes and declaration of results has been scheduled for today. Polls were held for 117 urban local bodies including eight high stake municipal corporations with close to 9222 candidate candidates in the fray. The civic body elections were the first ground level electoral battle after the farmers agitation began over the central government's farm laws. 
the political parties, including the ruling Congress government and former ally of the BJP, the Shiromani Akali Dal, had pegged the civic polls as a referendum on the farm laws. My colleague Mohammad Ghazali joins us live. Ghazali, the civic body polls seem to hold greater significance amid the farmers' agitation against the new agricultural reforms. As the majority of the protesters belong to Punjab, what's the atmosphere like on ground? See, uh, the counting has started and most of the locations from where we are getting the inputs, it is Congress which is winning uh, in the local bodies. But what is significant here is that Punjab goes, uh, these municipal polls have seen four-way fight. Earlier there was three-way fight when Aam Admi Party, Congress, among Aam Admi Party, Congress and BJP, Akali Dal combined. But now since Akalis and BJPs have split and BJP is generally perceived to be a party having urban vote share. So that has changed the entire dynamics. Now we'll have to see that whether Akali Dal, which relied on BJP for urban vote bank and uh, a BJP, which relied on Akali Dal for rural vote bank, since these elections involve local bodies in the urban areas as well as Nagar Panchayats. So that will have to be seen whether which party uh, after this agitation has uh, gained significantly. Because in Punjab, unlike other states, the government itself supports the farmer's agitation. So that is space of who is pro-farmer is shrinking. Because there are too many parties like Akali Dal, Aam Admi Party, even in Congress, which is supporting this farm agitation. And the other significant point in this municipal body's election is that most of the uh, parties have fielded their candidates not on symbol. So the number of independent candidates outnumber the candidates who are fighting on party symbols. The other point is that we'll have to see that there are two BJP MPs, Lok Sabha MPs from Punjab. One is uh, Som Prakash from Hoshiarpur district, uh, Hoshiarpur Lok Sabha uh, constituency, and other is Sunny Deol from Gurdaspur Lok Sabha constituency. Now, whether in these two constituencies do we uh, get to know whether BJP will have any significant uh, sort of gains in the local bodies' uh, polls? So the results are awaited, and there are key fights in the constituencies or in the local bodies which fall on the, under the assembly constituencies of big names or big political names of Punjab, like Sukhbir Badal represents Firozpur constituency, his wife Harsimrat Kaur Badal represents Bhatinda Lok Sabha constituency, where uh, so we'll have to see all these permutation combinations and results to see which party is gaining uh, significantly in these uh, lo local bodies elections. All right, we'll be tracking those developments closely. Meanwhile, a Delhi court on Tuesday extended the police custody of actor activist Deep Sidhu by seven days in connection with the Red Fort violence on Republic Day during the Farmers' Tractor Parade against the centre's three new agricultural laws. Now, in a fresh development, another accused has been arrested from Pitampura in Delhi. The special cell has taken 30-year-old Maninder Singh into custody and have recovered two swords. The accused claim he was charged up after seeing Facebook posts on the farmers' protest. My colleague Akshay Dongre joins us live. Akshay, the police claim that Maninder Singh used to train people on how to use a sword in an empty plot and that they've recovered videos of Singhu border and the Red Fort from his phone. Are these claims substantiated with concrete evidence? What can you tell us at the moment? Well, uh, the Delhi police has uh, uh, given certain uh, evidences as far as the uh, arrest of Maninder Singh is concerned. In fact, in uh, the Swarup Nagar area of the national capital, Maninder Singh had a school where he used to train people on how to use swords. Uh, there were videos that surfaced uh, from the Red Fort violence where Maninder Singh, in fact, was carrying sword. He was swinging it there at the Red Fort area, and that was the reason that he was on the police radar, and now he has finally been arrested. Uh, as far as the interrogation is concerned, it is going on right now. Uh, uh, Maninder Singh has also, uh, 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 to the police, it, uh, he has revealed that there were five more people who were with him, who uh, accompanied him on bikes, and the reason that he went uh, to uh, Red Fort was because he saw provocative videos on Facebook as far as the farmer's agitation is concerned. Now, this is being claimed by the Delhi police. Uh, it was the special cell of Delhi police that arrested. So what we can say right now is that the Delhi police is moving in a very fast manner to find, to uh, identify all the people who were primarily involved in the Red Fort violence, be it entering the Red Fort or uh, uh, provoking, uh, 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 provoking rather other people who uh, entered, entered the historical monument. Uh, as far as the recoveries are concerned, two swords have been recovered from his possession and uh, there have been a lot of videos of Red Food as well as uh, of Singhu border that have been recovered from the cell phone of Maninder Singh. Now, who the other five people were, that is yet to be uh, told. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, involvement of Maninder is concerned, he has been at the Singhu border on a couple of occasions. Thank you for that update, Akshay.
Welcome back. A delegation of European Union and African envoys in Jammu and Kashmir on a two-day visit to assess ground situation. Meetings have been scheduled with top politicians and officials. This is the third visit by foreign envoys following Jammu and Kashmir attaining Union territory status and come on the heels of a successful local polls in the region. 4G net was restored two weeks ago. My colleague Nazir Masoodi joins us live. Nazir, the Jammu and Kashmir administration has extended invitations to Valley-based civil society groups, media personnel and grassroots representatives, as well as DDC members to meet the delegation and provide an insight into the ground situation. But is this primarily for the optics? What can you tell us at the moment? Well, certainly the centre won't show, look, things are all white on the ground. And that is why this third list of the foreign envoys has been organised and it has been facilitated by the government of India and uh, these envoys uh, have arrived in Srinagar just a while back. Their convoy passed through this, this, this road, a Srinagar airport road, and uh, it was under heavy, heavy security all along this road, the, this massive security arrangement. But there's optics, you know, at least five to six bunkers, security bunkers which were dotting this road have been removed in Srinagar city since yesterday. So clearly, uh, the government wants to send a message that things are simply Yes, we have been saying from day one, from August fire, there's no nothing bad when it comes to while people have responded very peacefully, very virtually, they have not resorted to violence, and they have been expecting that the government will reduce the footprints of the security forces in Jammu and Kashmir. But this is the third visit to of the foreign envoys, which has been facilitated by the government. And these, you know, envoys will be meeting with uh, recently elected DDC members, some civil society groups, the media person. But so far, no invitation has been extended to main regional political parties like National Conference or the PDP. Thank you for that update, Nazir. We'll be tracking those developments closely. Petrol and diesel prices were hiked for the ninth day in a row as a rally in international oil prices took retail rates in India to new highs. Prices across metros are as follows. In Delhi, petrol is priced at 89.54 rupees, rupees a litre. Diesel is at 79.95 rupees a litre, while in Mumbai, petrol is at 96 rupees a litre and diesel at 86.98 rupees a litre. In Chennai, petrol stands at 91.68 rupees a litre, while the diesel prices are 85 rupees a litre and in Kolkata petrol is at 90.78 rupees a litre while diesel is at 83.54 rupees a litre. As, an, as a ripple effect of these rising fuel prices, Swiggy delivery executives are now having to switch to bicycles as fuel rates surge and impact everyone's budgets. Harsha Kumari Singh has a special report. What do you manage? cycle. Jitendra Malakar works with Swiggy delivering food. But the hike in petrol and diesel prices means he has had to abandon his bike and switch over to a bicycle to manage costs. Earlier, he managed to do 20 deliveries a day. Now, slower on a cycle, he has to get by with just about a dozen. Others like Ajay Kumar now have to shell out more for fuel. But they say they have little choice. पॉकेट पे ज्यादा खर्च हो रहा है हद से ज्यादा हो रहा है हम जो 130 140 रुपए के पेट्रोल भरा के हम सुबह से शाम तक अपना काम किया करते थे अब वही जो है हम 180 170 रुपए का तेल भराना पड़ रहा है इन राजस्थान द हाइक इन फ्यूल प्राइसेस हैज डायरेक्टली अफेक्टेड द टैक्सी बिजनेस व्हिच इन टर्न वाज हेविली डिपेंडेंट ऑन टूरिज्म आफ्टर द पेंडेमिक विद टूरिज्म एट एन ऑल टाइम लो टैक्सीज हैव टेकन अ हिट and the rising fuel costs mean a further shrink in profit margins. Rajesh Sharma has been in the taxi business since the 80s. With a fleet of over 40 cars, he has counters in five-star hotels. But with no foreign travellers and domestic visitors happy to move in their own vehicles, he says the taxi business is yet to recover. In 2013-14, where I am the fuel price is 50 rupees for diesel. आज की तारीख में डीजल की कॉस्ट नियर अबाउट 85.75 है। उसके हिसाब से अगर रेट्स लें तो हार्डली 5 और 10 परसेंट भी इंक्रीज नहीं हुआ होगा। टूरिस्ट नहीं आएगा तो होटल में भी जाना और होटल में भी बाहरे काम करना कोई यूज नहीं है। For the tourist and taxi trade, this has really been a double whammy. Already after the pandemic, there are few takers for tourism, 
and those tied with the taxi business say the increase in fuel prices, in fact the repeated increase in fuel prices, means it's difficult to keep the profit margins going in the taxi business. With Manish Kumar in Patna, in Jaipur, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV.